Are you ready? We all just love skating and that's why we do it. Oh, that looks so good. Arms out, Sophia. It's not a Saturday morning at the rink unless the new Hope Ice Arena is bustling and bursting with activity. Oh, there you go. Don Landon Boyce has been teaching skating here uh -oh. since the rink opened. It truly is part of my life and part of who I am at this point. Can you get up? On the ice with her, teachers who were once her students. All of the instructors at New Hope Ice Arena grew up skating here. So some of the teachers are my skaters from the 80s. Yeah! Some are from the 90s, some are from the 2000s, and well, they all say it's like a home away from home. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. It's time for us to go. We'll come again to skate. We spend a lot of time here with hockey. Red and whites on this blue line and on that blue line. Got it? Ready? Go. Youth hockey practice brings out volunteer coaches. A lot of good memories here. Young skaters are frequent flyers here. Of course, with their parents watching from the stands. We're here all the time, so it's like a second home. Wiggle, wiggle. But tucked out of the way above the ice. Hey, let's go around. We started at 7:30 this morning with our competitive program. Now we're into the youth program. Hands on our hips. And then all afternoon I'm here with our competitive solos and duets. Slide backwards. Dance coordinator Melissa Guzzi says she's lucky to have the space. Fingers up. Most dance studios that are in the recreation level get bounced around from school to school. And we have been able to be up here for 30 years, have turned it into a studio. Ready, let's tap our toes. The origins of the New Hope Ice Serena began not with a city initiative, but rather with a donation. In 1969, what was then the Minneapolis Northfield and Southern Railway donated nine and a half acres to New Hope with the stipulation that the land must be used for recreational purposes only. Voters passed a referendum in July of 1974, seeking $1 million in bond sales for an ice arena. Just 15 months later, the rink opened. It was a place where they said, We'll, we'll build the facilities and they will come, and they did. With 1,500 permanent seats, it was the largest of its kind in the Twin Cities, west of St. Paul. Back in those days, it was really something. Jim Corbett ran the city's golf course and had to learn how to run the arena. I needed to go out and actually study. Learn how to make ice and anything else the arena threw his way in his almost 40 years as manager. Many a morning I'd come here and There'd be so much fog you couldn't see from Red Line to the Zamboni Gate. As more suburbs got their own rinks, the rink became known for its unique atmosphere, partially due to the barrel roof. That's the reason we got the Mighty Ducks in 1992. They took a look, their scouts came out, took a look, and fell in love with the roof. The Disney movie The Mighty Ducks made the ice come alive giving this rink star power that would last long after the actors left the building. I had Emilio Estevez in my office, and I had Paulo Abdul, who he was married to at the time, and the gentleman that played Hans. He got his uh, contract for Red October while he was in my office. A grant made possible by the movie brought in funds to help with building a second sheet of ice, opening in 1996. The addition only elevated the status of the arena as it became a place to catch future hockey stars. I grew up in Crystal, just probably about six, seven miles from here. Heidi Richards Lindstrom has had a unique view of that phenomenon. I was a, what they would call a rink rat. She cheered for her NHL caliber brothers here. Their picture are on the wall and now she organizes an elite hockey tournament managing players coaches and NHL scouts we will have a rink full of scouts and despite all of that the attraction to this place is partially due to the sparkle the mighty ducks left behind the teams that I've brought in from all over the world have requested to play or practice in the north rink because that is the rink that the mighty ducks films were filmed in. Keeping the arena sparkling, though, requires daily work and routine investment. This is uh, actually the heartbeat of the, the whole operation here. This is uh, the room where the ice is being made. Current manager Mark Severson says improvements have made the rink more energy efficient. They got rid of Freon and use ammonia to chill the brine to make the ice. You can tell when you went in how warm it gets in there. We capture a lot of that heat and we use that in a number of places around the building. The warm air is used to heat water and air in the arena. It takes a great amount of work. It's a very big place and it's a very busy place. Speaking of busy, what about the Zambonis? They actually might be on the ice more than anyone else. This is where it all happens. This is the Zamboni room. Um, you know, when everybody comes to the rink, 
really what they want to see is the Zamboni. So here at New Hope, we do have two Zambonis. Uh, they're both electric Zambonis, so there's no gas emissions. Do they have names? Yeah, we got red and we got blue. <laughs> okay. Tuck the laces into the skates. Also staying busy. And let her rip. Chris O'Toole keeps skates sharp and rents them out for open skating like he has for 28 years. I don't really have an official title. But he has lots of jobs. Are you here to watch hockey? Chris has had a front row seat to witness the more than half million people pass through the ice arena each year. Turn in your circle. Providing an opportunity for every tap, twirl, fall, or power move that keeps this arena bustling on a Saturday. I would say it's a huge asset for the community. Gives the community lots of different things to do, whether it's watch hockey, play hockey, learn how to skate, or just come in during open skating and skate on their own. And that's a hard stop. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.